7, what Prahlad learned in the womb, and this is text 25. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Dear Jagaranam Swapna, Susuktir Iti Vrittayaha, Taneva Vanu Budyante, So Dyaksha Purusha Paraha, So Jagaranam Swapna. Susuptir iti vrittaya Tayye naiva nubudyante So dyak 
Jaksha Purusha Paraha Pure Jagaranam Swapna Susuptir Iti Vrittayaha Tanye Naiva Nubudyante Sodhyaksa Purusha Paraha Intelligence. Of intelligence. Jagaranam. Jagaranam. The waking or active state of the gross senses. Swapna. Dreaming. The activity of the senses without the gross body. Susupti. Deep sleep. Or a cessation of all activities. Although the living entity is the seer. Iti, thus, sittaya, the various transactions, ta, te, yena, by whom, eva, indeed, anubhuyante, are perceived, sa, that, adhyaksha, overseer, who is different from the activities, Purusha, the enjoyer, Paraha, transcendental. Mm. So we're not sure who's speaking here. Oh, okay. Who's, who's still on? By who? This is, okay. Intelligence can be perceived in three states of activity, wakefulness, dreaming, and deep sleep. The person who perceives these three is considered the, the original master, the ruler, the supreme personality of Godhead. Purport. Without intelligence, one cannot understand the direct activities of the senses, nor can he understand dreaming or the cessation of all gross and subtle activities. The seer and the controller is the supreme personality of Godhead, the, super, the supreme soul, by whose direction the individual soul can understand when he is awake, when he is sleeping, and when he is completely in trance. In Bhagavad Gita 15.15, the Lord says, Sarvasya chaham vridhisani nisto matat smirti jnanam aponam cha. I am seated in everyone's heart, and from me comes remembrance, knowledge, and forgetfulness. The living entities are completely absorbed in the three states of wakefulness, dreaming, and deep sleep through their intelligence. This intelligence is supplied by the Supreme Personality of Godhead, who accompanies the individual soul as a friend. Srila Madhvacharya says, 
that the living entity is sometimes described as sattva buddhi when his intelligence acts directly to perceive pains and pleasures above activities. There is a dreaming state in which understanding comes from the Supreme Personality of Godhead, mata smirti jnanam apohem cha. The Supreme Personality of Godhead, the Super Soul, is the Supreme Controller, and under his directions, the living entities are sub-controllers. One must understand that the Supreme Personality of Godhead is one's intelligence. Hmm. Om Agyan Timirandasya Gedajana Salakaya Chaksu Im Militamina Tasmai Shri Guru Vena Maha Shri Chaitanya Mano Bistam Stapitam Yena Bhutale Swayam Rupa Kedamayam Dadati Swa Padati Kam Nama Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Kristaya Bhutale Shimakti Bhakti Vedanta Swami Tinamine Namaste Saraswati Deve Gauravani Vicharine Nirvishesha Shunyavadi Pasyatya De Satarine Panchakalpa Tu Vishcha Kripa Sindhu Be Vajapatitanam Bhavane Byo Vaishnave Byo Namaha Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Sri Advaita Gadhara Sivasini Rora Bhaktarinda Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. So in the material world, there's three states of one's consciousness here as described or mentioned. The day-to-day -day consciousness that we interact in the daylight time generally is wakefulness. Of course, some people stay awake at night too. And then there's dreaming, which is a more subtle state of existence, and then deep sleep, which is the most uh, subtle. All three are states of consciousness. Uh, two of the states we can perceive things through the intelligence, that is through the wakefulness state and through the dreaming state. Deep sleep is so much covered by uh, the energy of the Supreme that one goes what we see, or at least the material energy that one is unaware of what is happening completely. So it says here, the person who can perceive these three is considered Krishna, or the Supreme Personality of Godhead. So we go, we vacillate, or we, what we say, go, we three, these three states of consciousness. Um, but there is another state of consciousness called uh, say transcendental consciousness or Krishna consciousness or one's eternal consciousness. Here it's mentioned also that intelligence is coming from the Lord. And Krishna explains that in the Bhagavad Gita. Raso Homap Sukunteya Bhavasmi Satsasuri. Yeah, that's there too, yeah, but this is another verse. Vasa rasoham apsakuntaya prabhasme sasi surya pranava sarva bedishu sabdake purusham nishu. Sabdake purusham nishu since I am the ability in that. So ability is developed through intelligence. Intelligence is supplied by the Supreme Personality of Godhead. And here, of course, 1515, as you mentioned, also, the Lord is supplying according to one's desire. Um, so in both cases, everything is coming from the Supreme Personality. One should not take credit for anything because otherwise, whatever we have or can do is coming from the mercy of the Lord, either directly through the material energy, indirectly through the material energy, or directly through Krishna himself. Now, intelligence is a very, what we say, significant factor in our existence. <laughs> I was just thinking, sometimes devotees would go to Prabhupada. Prabhupada, I don't have any intelligence. And Prabhupada say, would say, get some. <laughs> <laughs> of course, everybody has intelligence, but it needs to be, what we say, developed. And intelligence is the discriminating factor of the living entity's consciousness, where one can discriminate between action and not action, right and wrong. In other words, the opposites that 
make up the material energy, are used to, uh, are used or understood through this discriminating factor of the intelligence. Intelligence is also determination. And so for devotees, this is very important because in order to become Krishna conscious, one has to have strong determination because there are so many, we might say, obstacles that we may will meet both internally with our own attachments and material desires and externally through the material energy that is imposed upon us, either in the form of sufferings or in the form of diversions away from the process of Krishna consciousness. So this um, determination is the feature of the intelligence. Therefore, Prabhupada said, one had to practice Krishna consciousness requires intelligence. And of course, everyone has intelligence, but material energy is also very intelligent, and material energy knows how to work in such a way as to allure the conditioned soul, or this, the struggling conditioned soul who is trying to become Krishna conscious away from Krishna. So one has to have a sharp intelligence, or at least be able to have some sources where they can gain intelligence. Of course, intelligence comes from Guru, intelligence comes from Shastra, intelligence comes from Krishna himself, ultimately, and intelligence is also formulated by experience, like that. Um, if you don't get enough rest at night, if you're, in other words, if your mind is tired, intelligence is also de decreased, or the ability to use one's intelligence is lessened. So one of the factors mentioned in the Bhagavatam in the third canto is sleep is one of the features of intelligence, like that. So of course, the devotees are always trying to reduce the amount of bodily activities, including sleeping, but not to the point where one can, what we say, um, not be able to function properly in one's execution of devotional service. So that has to be monitored, that has to be evaluated, that has to be experimented with until one can start to understand what one needs on the bodily platform. So intelligence stays strong because when intelligence is there, it connects one to the soul. Out of the different features of one's existence, we have the mind, we have the senses, we have the objects of the senses which are external, and then we have the intelligence. And then higher than the intelligence, or, or finer than the intelligence, is the soul. So Srila, sh I think it's, yeah, Jiva Goswami mentions that the connection to the spiritual realm is through the intelligence. So one has to apply the intelligence in order to practice Krishna consciousness properly. Therefore one has to hear regularly. And one has to practice what we hear. Hearing comes in the form of reading. Hearing comes in the form of hearing from authorities. And then what is the second point? Not hearing like one ear and out the other. That's not hearing. Hearing means to under, try to understand what is being said in the form of either reading or verbal communication. And by that trying to understand, one starts to go deeper into what, or gets a clear understanding of what is being said. And then two things will happen. One will get realizations and one will start to ask questions based on what they have. That's an act of intelligence. If we're not finding realizations based on our hearing or questions based on our hearing and reading, that means we're not really tuned into the, to the, to the sound vibration, either through reading or through uh, through speaking. So one has to contemplate. Sometimes we see, we use an example, of what is the importance of repetition? Repetition is good exercise for the intelligence, especially for spiritual topics. Um, uh, where the example would be given where um, when the Brahma Samhita was published by ISKCON, uh, with the purports by Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati. So we, the devotees were kind of overwhelmed by his English and couldn't completely understand or even maybe even partially understand what was being communicated. 
And this is Bhakti Siddhanta. You had a very high level of uh, vocabulary in the English language, and he used it for preaching in certain quarters, mm -hmm. especially to intellectuals. So using that, he, he gave the purports to the Brahma Sunita. So the devotees in ISKCON are us. Some of them came to Prabhupada and said, you know, we can't understand what your spiritual master is writing. Can you uh, write something or write a commentary or an explanation? And Prabhupada said, no. He said, just you read it over and over and over again. And by doing that, he said, it'll become clearer and clearer as each time you read it. So, so that's, that's one of the ways, or one of the main ways by which we can start to understand things. Uh, so retention of knowledge comes through, of course, application. The application is preceded by understanding. So we can't really, really apply the knowledge in a practical way unless we start to understand it. So therefore, the process of hearing requires thoughtfulness as we hear and start to apply. And then when we, through application comes realization. And then from higher than realization comes the skills and qualities and, that are developed through the practi pr practical application of the knowledge coming through realization. Does that make sense? follow that so far. So the whole process of learning is, is, is different stages. So hearing is the first part like that. Now one way to increase knowledge or to sharpen one's intelligence is through, rep through repeating what you hear. That's why speaking or preaching or even writing or just, yeah, these, these ways uh, and creates a greater bastion of memory. Memory becomes increased when we start to repeat. That's why it was fa it's fashionable to repeat what you hear, just like we hear a class. I'll give you an example. When I was in New Vrindavan, back in the old days, <laughs> the good old days, uh, Devotees had a tendency to fall asleep in class. In fact, sometimes the whole class would fall asleep. <laughs> so we started, even the speaker. <laughs> <laughs> even the speaker fell asleep. Some, not, not all the times, but we, we had many incidents where the speaker would get a little drowsy and then pause, and then you would think that he was thinking, but he wasn't, he was, some, <laughs> he was somewhere else, actually. So there was so, some concern about to rectify this anomaly here. So uh, we thought, well, what can we do? We tried different, let me say, uh, more violent term ways to do it, but that didn't work. <laughs> Skirt gun, but with high power behind it. <laughs> yeah, there was like a, a nozzle on it. It wasn't just squirt, it was just like a stream. <laughs> and you'd get hit. And even if the water didn't wake you up, the force of hitting, hitting getting hit would <laughs> wake you up. Was <laughs> that for the speaker or for everyone else? The speaker sometimes used it <laughs> on himself. <laughs> So this was, this was a concern, so what to do? So one of the things that uh, someone thought of, which, was, which was really, really good, was that everyone was required, everyone who attended classes, of course in those days everyone attended classes, uh, to speak to someone that day in, the, in their day-to-day -day activities what was said in class. And the idea is to ask another person, what was class about? Or what did you remember from class? Or what was the highlight of class? Something like that. And so that helped to uh, inspire people to hear better like that, or to become more attuned to the hearing process. So even though we are in a waking consciousness, sometimes we, we slip from that conscious into a dreaming consciousness, <laughs> sometimes even into deep sleep. 
So, so it doesn't really, even if your eyes are open and you're moving, doesn't mean you're awake. <laughs> it means you're, you're, when your intelligence is active, then you're awake. <laughs> and that's what it takes to practice Krishna consciousness. So keeping that intelligence awake means to sharpen the intelligence through the process of hearing and chanting more and more. And so therefore we can process things in the, as they come and start to understand things. And Srila Prabhupada emphasized that. Not only should we be able to understand what is being said, we should be able to understand it from different angles. It's just like when, when you have a group of sages discussing maybe a verse or some point in the scriptures, you'll find different angles of opinions or even diverse, uh, what we say, definitions of what's being said. And they may all be right because they're seeing it from a certain perspective or understanding it from a certain perspective. That's the nature of spiritual philosophy like that. So when the intelligence is inspired to and being activated by the process of hearing and chanting and through the process of remembering also. Therefore, it's, it's one of the ways to remember is to learn verses. This is, a, this is one of the best ways to, to sharpen your memory, is to learn the verses in the Shastras as a regular daily function. Read a verse and then, you know, go through the process of learning it and then throughout the day recite it. And the best time to do that is in the evening before you fall asleep. And then the first thing you do in the morning is when you wake up, you recite that verse like that, like that. Because uh, usually right at the early time when you wake up, the mind is free from all the encumbrances of thoughts. And if you're awake, that is, <laughs> sometimes it takes a while. <laughs> but when you're awake, then the mind, well, the, then the intelligence filters things into the mind and then the mind can perceive things that are more subtle or things that you would not normally think of. So when you practice learning verses like that, you can remember easily in the morning time. That's one of the ways. That's just a technique. Other people may have different techniques that work. But that helps to sharpen the intelligence. And the intelligence needs to be sharpened in order to understand this philosophy and learn to pry up, apply it. So here, the whole thing is that ultimately, intelligence is coming from Krishna. So another way to activate the intelligence is to pray to Krishna to give you the intelligence or to remember Krishna when, you want, when you're performing your activities by re remembering Krishna, then Krishna comes through in the form of intelligence on how to execute the activities. That's generally also. Of course, that is more, that's more direct like that. But if one has not been practicing how to sharpen the intelligence through reading, hearing, and application, and understanding, then one may not be, even be able to hear Krishna or understand what Krishna is saying to them. So we need to practice like that. So intelligence is the, the feature of, it's our best friend in the story of King Prachini Barhishat. Um, uh, when Narada Muni is uh, narrating that analogy, um, there's one, he, he, he gives the different parts of the person's body different personalities. So the intelligence becomes the queen, like that. And the soul becomes the king, like that. So the king and queen. So when the soul, uh, so the soul, the queen, she helps the king in his execution of his duties like that. So there's one part in one of the verses where the king dies, and then he needs to be, you know, we say, cremated. So the queen is in anxiety. She no longer has her king. And so she wants to throw herself onto the funeral pyre also. But then a Brahmin comes, but that Brahmin's in disguise, it's actually the super soul. And the super soul appears in the form of a Brahmin giving advice. He said, don't you recognize me? <laughs> I am your best friend. 
you know, I've come to give you the advice. You're, you're need, there's no need for you to follow the king, in other words, in this sense, because ultimately you also are a living being, of course, in the form of a queen, it's personified. So then, he, taking the queen as a separate entity, the Raman preaches the principles of Krishna consciousness like that. That also, you will also have to die soon, so before you die, it's better you become Krishna conscious. Better you become Krishna conscious. So our best friend is our intelligence which is a feature of Krishna's mercy upon the living entity, like that. Well, Krishna's ultimate suhit. Suhit means that friend who is the best of all friends, who supplies the intelligence the devotee needs. And the intelligence can come from different sources. It can come through Krishna directly within the heart. It can come through Krishna through the external environment, through other devotees. Or it can come simply by our practice of devotional service, which is well also Krishna, like that. So one so practice developing that intelligence more and more, because the intelligence is the only thing that we have to really connect us with the process of devotional service. So sometimes they say if you're not so intelligent you can't figure out the philosophy, just chin Hare Krishna. <laughs> And if you become, what we say, proficient or de developed in the chanting of Hare Krishna, that is, then that is also success, even if you don't understand the philosophy. But Prabhupada uses that in a concessionary way, saying that, you know, there's some persons that can never understand this philosophy, but they can chant Hare Krishna. <laughs> for, for examples, people who are, um, who can't hear, may be deaf, so they can't hear the sound vibration, but they may be able to read. And then that's a little bit, but hearing also is more stimulating to the intelligence than reading. Jai Sisi Panchatattva Ki Jai. Okay, so the importance of developing proper intelligence. And then of course it's mentioned three states of consciousness. Wakefulness, dreaming, and deep sleep. In the dreaming stage, it's quite interesting because in dreaming, we can understand ourselves different from the body in that state of consciousness. It's hard. We can also do it in our waking state, and there's a process that's mentioned in the second canto through what we say empirical observation of all the external features of our existing, using the intelligence to discriminate between what is perceived and what is perceivable. And who is the perceiver? We are the perceiver and we're perceiving those items which are perceivable. So all these three are separate entities. So although I'm perceiving I have a body, I'm not the body because of, I can perceive that I have a body. So there must be something that's perceiving my body which is which is something more subtle. So in that way we start to understand the difference between the soul and the body, or between matter and spirit, like that. So using that feature, but in, in dreaming, dreaming you, sometimes you see yourself in the dream. And you see what you know as your waking existence in the dream, or some facsimile thereof. And then you perceive yourself in the dream. So as he, it's like it's mentioned, maybe not in this verse, but the verse 27, I think it was also mentioned there, that perceiving oneself in the dream is, means that the soul is watching his, self, his idea of himself, which he is his, of his waking identity, in this subtle state of dreaming. So we use that to understand that I'm different than the body. Because watching yourself means who is watching and who is that image that you see in the dream. So these are different ways that we can use for preaching and to show the difference between uh, the body and you. Like that. All right, so there's 
Any questions or comments on anything? Yes, Baruch. How can we stay attentive? Um, I mean, that we, the intelligence is awake on the topic that doesn't interest us. Mm, like yeah. some, sometimes also on the Bhagavatam class or Bhagavad Gita class. Too. Yeah. There's where you have to become more forceful in pushing that intelligence towards. In other words, you have to really actua ac accentuate your mental proclivities where you start to really start to hear. And you know, what happens when you do that, a lot of times the immediate experience is something that's not interesting. But after a while, when you start forcing yourself, you start to hear more and the, the, the idea of not liking it or being bored changes and becomes interesting. So you have to force yourself to hear, you have to force yourself to concentrate. You have to force the mind. But when you start to learn to control the mind, then you can use it. Because too much force is no good either. And the example that's given in the Bhagavatam, spoken by Krishna himself, is like riding a horse. He said, and he uses that to direct the mind. It's in the 11th canto where Krishna says that uh, in directing the mind, one should not, uh, one, it's like directing a horse, but if one pulls on the reins of the horse too hard, then the horse will buck and jump and won't, won't be controlled. But if it's too loose with the reins, then the horse is again acting independently. So Krishna uses that one should gradually Bring the mind to where you want it to be through practice like that. So, um, can I cut? It's like um, being hmm. forcefully being attentive to what the speaker has to say, even though you're uh, not. What to speak of? Well, uh, what the speaker has to say. Like, the forcefully being attentive on the topic that speaker is saying. Mm -hmm. okay. Well, you know, <coughs> what you may use, use enough force, but you have to understand what's the limit of that force before the mind becomes, you know, just starts to recoil and act differently. Yeah. So the idea is that those are in control, they can use their intelligence just to move their mind from place to place and the mind just follows the directions of the intelligence. It becomes natural and easy, but that takes practice, and that's part of mind control. And learning how to discriminate between what, what comes into the mind as, as beneficial or necessary and what is not necessary. Well, one of the ways to increase, slightly increase attention is sitting properly. If we're sitting with, with our backs straight, then the energy of the spine is more, flows more natural and concentration becomes more, what we say, easier. <laughs> it helps and that's why Prabhupada would always say, sit properly when we were chanting Japa like that. As a suggestion, one, uh, one thing that might help is to set the scene. And somehow or another, Krishna has brought me here, and he's brought the speaker here, and he's brought everyone else. And that my duty now is to, to, to hear what Krishna wants to tell me. So I should try at least, because Krishna wants me to be here, so I should be here in such a way as that's pleasing to Krishna right. and to Krishna's devotees. That's con that's. Uh, you know, convin convincing the mind. Yeah. 
I came, so now why, why am I here if I'm not going to listen, if I'm not going to concentrate? Well, you might think, well, I'm here because I have to be. <laughs> but that, that, that's not Krishna consciousness. <laughs> There's a purpose for everything we do that, what is, that, is, that is given to us as a requirement. So, nasta prayeshu apadresha nityam bhagavata sevaya. So, he, hearing regularly Bhagavatam, as, as the verse goes on to say, practically all of uh, all, practically all of one's material desire to destroy, practically almost everything, simply by the process of hearing. So it's purifying. So when, when you understand what's the benefit, along with convincing your mind that it's the benefit, <laughs> we have to see ourselves separate from our mind. And we can then learn to use the mind and not be used by the mind. That takes practice also. Because the modern mentality is that what I think is what I am. But devotees know that that's not absolutely, it's not correct. Because the thoughts of the mind are coming from various sources. And even from last, from previous lives. As my Bhakti Siddhantas would say, your mind is an enemy. <laughs> so, well, what would he say? No, he, no, he's, I'm sorry, he'd say, your mind is a non-devotee. That's what he would say. So we don't associate with non-devotees. <laughs> That's the idea. So the idea is, yeah, somehow or other, using various methods, bring that mind under to where it should be. And we struggle with japa. That one is the one that's... So practicing mind control really starts there. Mm -hmm. Learning to keep the, the, your mind concentrated on the sound. Although it might be thinking other things, still that sound is where you want to bring your attention back to. And practice. Krishna God is simply practice. But if you don't practice, you don't get it. Mm -hmm. Anything else? Urugai, you have a question? No? Okay. Thank you. All right, we can stop here. Srimad Bhagavatam Kija. Srila Prabhupada Kija.